Hey there, Shadows of Brimstone fans. Aaron Lovejoy here from Miniature Monthly. And today, I'm putting together the core set heroes from Shadows of Brimstone. That's right, City of Ancients and Swamps of Death. We're gonna put the heroes together. I'm gonna show you how to get them all ready to go, ready to jump in those mines, and ready to play with. All right, here we go. First things first, you're gonna need some tools. Uh, I got a pair of God Hand Clippers here. Um, these clippers are super sharp, super nice. They also tend to break. The tips break off of them very easily <laughs> because they're so sharp, but mine still work great, so I'm gonna have those. You can just use regular uh, uh, plastic sprue cutters if you want, but I prefer the God Hands. I've also got several knives. Um, knives are super sharp. Be sure, be sure to be very careful when you're using knives. Um, if you're a little kid, don't use it. Have your parents do it. If you're a parent, um, don't cut your finger off. That's all I'm saying. So be very careful uh, with sharp, sharp implements like this. Um, so I've got a, a round tipped knife. Um, this is for scraping, uh, scraping like curved areas. Very nice. I've also got a scalpel with a round tip on it. Um, and that is also for scraping areas. I've got a file uh, for filing down stuff. This works very good. It's the beveled edge one. So it's beveled on one side, flat on the other. Very cool. And then I've got a regular uh, X-Acto knife. So let's get started with uh, cutting this thing apart. All right, so all these models come on a sprue and you have to get the model off of the sprue. So I'm using my sprue cutters here and I'm getting uh, fairly close to the model, but not exactly right next to the model. Um, I'm leaving a little bit of that sprue, like we call it a nub. I'm leaving a little bit of the nub um, showing on the model. And the reason for this is I don't wanna tear the plastic as I'm cutting, off, cutting these models off the sprue. All these models have between two and five connection points. And so you just kind of got to work your way around. Being careful not to cut anything off that you don't want to cut off. So with the Preacher, um, he has a little sash that comes off the back of his uh, outfit here. Um, some You might be tempted to cut right there, but you want to cut back here. That's where the sash actually ends. But to be safe, maybe you cut a little further back. I know sometimes in the haste to get these models uh, de-sprued, um, I've heard of people cutting feet off, hands off. <laughs> you know, the saloon girl's feet are very delicate. Even the top of her hat here is, is could, you could accidentally cut off. So just sort of take your time, take a step back and, and be careful and cut these off. If you have a question, cut further up on the sprue. It's okay, we can always trim it back down and you know get it looking good. This is the sprue removal part. Um, pretty easy. It's not rock and science, but just be careful. Always make sure to, uh, uh, you know, get all the parts off. Do a once over when you're done uh, cleaning off the sprue. Do a once over and make sure that you got all the parts. You don't want to throw anything away. Now, those nubs I was talking about, they're like that. And you just got to clean them right off. Once they're off, you're good to go. Now, always remember to get your, your feet, the nubs off the feet, because if you don't have a good connection point to the base, um, if that nub is still on the bottom of the foot, it's not gonna connect real well, and you're gonna end up, your model's gonna pop off the base quite a bit. Um, I usually trim off the nubs, and then I file the feet, fleet, feet, I can't talk, I file the feet flat. And you see, using my file, using my knife, get those feet flat, and we're good to go. All right, so now is the part of the video where you have to start making some important life choices. What do you wanna do with these miniatures? Do you just wanna put them together and game with them um, without painting them or anything? Well, in that case, we're gonna glue them together right now. But if you wanna paint them, if you wanna have a little bit better quality miniature, uh, don't glue them together just yet. Wait for further on in the video and I will show you some, uh, some ways to detail out these miniatures that make them look much nicer. <laughs> All right, for gluing your miniatures together, we're gonna to be using super glue and some Instaset. You wanna give a nice dry fit to your models, as you can see on this Marshall. Um, he fits together really, really well. Dry fit them up and then uh, apply a little bit of glue. I always apply just a little touch of glue to the hand um, so you get a good bond there. But you see, this guy fits together really, really well. Very nice. Now, um, other models like the Rancher and even the Preacher, I had a couple little issues with. The little nub that holds that's between the hand and the arm um, was a little bit too big. Um, this happens sometimes. I just take my file, quickly file around, all the way around that nub um, to kind of make it a little bit smaller. Uh, you'll even notice I, I, um, I filed the, the end of it 
um, so that it, it's a little bit shorter as well. Now I do one more thing with her. On the gun itself, I kind of bored out the hole there as well. So I kind of just spun my my um, X-Acto knife around and see, it just sort of scrapes out a little bit of that plastic. And guess what? Right there, it fits perfectly. And um, the same thing uh, can be said for the Preacher as well. His hand had a little bit of issues fitting in there, but it worked out just fine. So as you can see right here, boom, hands on, I position it the way I wanted it to be. You can actually kind of twist that hand a little bit if you want If you want to give him a little bit of style. Now the other thing I had an issue with was on uh, his head, and that was more because I was just an idiot and didn't place his head on in the right direction. <laughs> So as you can see here, I'm kind of struggling with it, but um, but as soon as I turn that head a little bit to the uh, right there, it actually pops right into place and is perfect. So like right here, boom! Oh my gosh, it fits perfectly. So um, very easy build on him as well. All right, so gluing, I always glue. Um, on these ones, I'm going to be putting them on a different, a different base when I'm done. So I'm only gluing one foot. I put a little drop of glue on there and use my accelerator um, to get it to to insta set to the base. Now for the bandito, he's another pretty easy one to put together. Um, his hat has this little key in it. Um, and the the corresponding part to his head should fit in perfectly. Now, I had a little bit of a problem. That is the side of the key that is supposed to go on that side of the head. <laughs> and I put it on backwards. Um, the good news is once you put it on backwards, you know, because one, it doesn't fit very well, and two, the hat's way too far forward. Um, so I just flipped it around. I was a little bit flustered here, so I went off camera, but... Um, but the hat goes on perfectly and it's centered on the head um, and good to go. Now, uh, for the arms, the arms, um, you want to make sure that all those mold lines are off. Uh, the studio version, I use the dynamite. And um, but for my version, for my home version, I wanted to have the dual gunslinger, um, dual wielding gunslinger, uh, El Chupacabra. That's my uh, that's my bandito's name. I love him. Um, anyway, super easy. The the Indian. Um, this is my favorite model from the set, and he is super cool. As you can see, he uh, test fits together really well. Double check, make sure the, the the mold lines in between those arm joints are all gone. Um, cause this will make your life much, much easier. Also get off all that plastic, um, anything on the outside edges of those arms, um, just to make sure everything fits really, really well. Do another test fit. As you can see, this one actually fit together really well. Um, and it sticks. <laughs> you almost don't have to use glue, but you need to. So glue it together and boom, you are done. So for the saloon girl, she's easy. She's a one piece. Um, clean her up. She's ready to go. The gunslinger, just the head, works just like the preacher. And also the lawman, same thing. All you got to do is put that, that head on. All right, so your models are built. If that's all you wanted to do, you're good to go. You can play the game. Now, you might be asking yourself, Aaron, why do you use super glue and not, like, say, plastic cement? Um, there are plastic models. They should work pretty well with plastic cement. Well, that is true. Um, I don't use plastic cement because it gives me a massive headache, like, immediately massive headache. So I like the super glue better. Plus I like using InstaSet um, and I use that to uh, to make the bonds be almost in instantaneous. Um, it also makes them a little bit more brittle. So if I wanna break the model apart later, um, like say pull the model off the base so I can put it onto a more a better display base, um, I have that option. Uh, the other thing is super glue uh, will bond metal, it bonds resin, um, and it bonds plastic. So it bonds everything, whereas plastic glue only bonds plastic. So I just prefer super glue. That's it. If you want to use plastic glue, go right ahead. It's it's your prerogative. All right. So uh, if that's all you wanted to do, the video's over. You're good to go. Go play your game. Um, if you want to do a little bit more, keep watching. A lot of painters uh, do what's called mold line removal. So you're gonna to wanna to go over the entire model and that little mold line that's in between um, the two parts of the mold, uh, it just leaves a little line and you wanna get rid of that. And it's very easy to shave off. Plastic figures are very forgiving this way. Um, you just use the side of your knife and you just kind of scrape away that mold line. Now you wanna be careful not to scrape too hard because you'll actually start scraping like flat marks into your model and that doesn't look good either. Um, also, sometimes those mold lines go over some really tight detail and you just wanna 
take your time here. Uh, I use different tools for this. You saw me using my straight edge Exacto blade, um, but I also use a scalpel. This scalpel has got a smaller blade, but it's very sharp and it's, it scrapes away plastic really easily. So when I'm doing something that's a little bit more tedious, I'll switch to my scalpel. I can also use my file. Um, files are great as long as, again, you don't press too hard. I'm, I'm using a really light touch here and just sort of sanding away um, those mold lines. Uh, I can switch out to my uh, round tipped Exacto, which also works really good in tight areas, especially if the area is curved. I like that curved blade because it helps me. It's it's better than using the flat blade. On something like the the preacher's rosary here, um, you know, getting around all the parts of the cross and the rosary beads and stuff is a little bit more tedious. So you're going to want to slow things down just a little bit and get all those mold lines off. I know there's mold lines across the top of all those little beads, but if you kind of just let your uh, blade uh, right across the top of them, it gets most of them off fairly easily. Just don't push too hard because you don't want to lose the detail of those beads. Now you want to get every part of the models. So uh, <laughs> this is kind of the tedious part. There's mold lines that go up and down the edges of jackets. It's just really, really crazy how many, I mean, they're everywhere. But um, if you just kind of work your way along the figure, it it's no problem, you'll get them all off. Now things like the guns, you wanna slow down again and make sure that you don't file the, the gun barrels flat or anything like that, but you do wanna get those mold lines off. All right, so once your mold lines are all cleaned up, um, you can make another life choice. Do you wanna fill your gaps? Now, I usually don't do this for my armies, um, but sometimes I do. For my Shadows of Brimstone models, I definitely do because I want them to look really, really cool. So. That being said, you're going to need to fill some gaps. I use a putty called Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part epoxy putty. You you uh, mix it together 50-50. I usually just roll two little, two little balls of putty, take a look at them. If they look about the same, I'm good to go. Uh, mash that putty into the mold lines. Oops, I'm sorry, gaps. I meant gaps. I'm sorry, it's 3 a.m. I've been working all night on this video and things are getting crazy gaps. Um, it's it's a little bit tedious. You don't have to be perfect. Just get it into all the cracks and crevices that you want to fill up. Once they're filled up, take an old paintbrush. Uh, typically, I use a hobby brush that has a little bit stiffer bristles and wet it in water and basically just wipe the putty smooth. The really neat thing about epoxy sculpt is it it smooths out with water. It, it, it reduces with water. So unlike, say, like green stuff or need a tight putty, which you put water on that and it doesn't do anything, epoxy sculpt will actually smooth out better with water. So you take your brush, you smooth out all those gaps, and guess what? You're done. The gaps are filled and you're ready to paint. Another thing I would check on him is the join between his hat and his head, but it looks pretty good as well. Perfect. Basically, I just want all the figures to look like they're a one-piece figure. So everything needs to look like like the saloon girl. So I think we have achieved that, and now we're ready to move on. All right. Well, I hope that helped you uh, build all your heroes for City of Ancients and Swamps of Death. Be sure to watch the rest of my videos on all the assembly from these core sets. They're really helpful. Till next time, go paint something.